Hi, this is Dave Cummings from Point Loma Nazarene University. This is Microbiology of Infectious Diseases. We're in the middle of a very short series uh, reviewing some basic chemistry as it applies to microorganisms. Right now, what we're going to talk about are the lipids. Now, we're going to define what lipids are. We're going to look at the various types of lipids and consider the ways that they're used in cells, including uh, emphasizing what are the most common and abundant lipids that we see in microorganisms. And then I'll show you an image of an example of a very important uh, storage lipid called polyhydroxybutyrate. Lipids uh, among the macromolecules are the one group that are not, um, they're not made up of, uh, of, of, of polymers, right? There's no monomer that gets repeated and strung together the way that we see with the nucleic acids the proteins, and the polysaccharides. Lipids instead are any of the organic macromolecules that are hydrophobic in character. And if you remember from one of the earlier, um, one of the earlier videos when we talked about polar covalent bonds and nonpolar covalent bonds and ionic character, we talked about how we can determine what's going to be hydrophobic or hydrophilic based on whether or not there are any charges and whether or not there are any um, polar covalent bonds associated with the compound. And so lipids are going to be mostly hydrocarbon, meaning carbon and hydrogen. Because if you remember, carbon to carbon covalent bonds are nonpolar. Carbon to hydrogen covalent bonds are nonpolar. And these lipids aren't going to have any charges associated with their hydrophobic regions either. Four primary groups of lipids. These include the fats, uh, which are really important in, um, in animals, in humans. Think about cushioning. Maybe you're sitting on a chair right now, and there are fats that are cushioning your muscle tissue and your bone from getting crushed, from, from hurting, from being damaged. Insulation, right? These fats allow uh, animals like you and me to be able to live in crazy places like Chicago or Idaho or the Arctic. Uh, in microorganisms, we don't see fats being used as cushioning or insulation, but they are very important energy storage compounds, just like the polysaccharides are. So even though a lot of the energy system in living cells is geared towards extracting energy from, um, from sugars, it turns out that fats are actually a more efficient way to store high energy electrons and therefore energy that can ultimately be converted over to ATP. And so that's why everything that we know of, whether it's plants or animals, even microorganisms, store fat when food is abundant because it's the most efficient way to store that fat. Without a doubt, the most important lipids and the most abundant lipids uh, in the biosphere are going to be cell membranes, the phospholipids. These phospholipids have a, a charged and hydrophilic head that has phosphate, sometimes some nitrogen, a variety of charges and polarity to it, attached to a long chain of carbon and hydrogen that's very hydrophobic. Those phospholipids then are key to cellular membranes and as you know, all living cells have to have a membrane around them. And in the eukaryotic world, not only do they have a membrane around, uh, around the cytoplasm, differentiating the outside from the inside, but then they have all this compartmentalization in the form of organelles that are made up of more cellular membranes and more phospholipids. So phospholipids, extremely important group of, uh, of hydrophobic molecules within cells. Steroids. <clears throat> Steroids aren't just uh, all about what you hear about in sports. Steroids are, they're based essentially on the same structure as a cholesterol. And you can hear that sterol uh, uh, root in the word uh, steroid. Um, fungal and animal cell membranes use them for stability. They help the membrane to not fall apart when it's too hot, to not lock up when it's too cold. And we see them being used as hormones as well. So many of the hormones are hydrophobic lipids uh, as opposed to uh, other types of molecules. So for example, testosterone is a steroid-based hormone, actually very similar to cholesterol in structure. Now we're not going to see the steroids in any significant way in the bacteria. The fungi are the one group of, of, um, of microorganisms that are likely to have steroids associated with their cell membranes. 
And then we've got waxes. You and I produce waxes in places that need to stay dry, right? These are hydrophobic molecules. And so the interior of your ear, for example, will build up wax to keep water from building up and infection establishing itself in there. Most plant leaves uh, are covered in waxes. And the drier the climate, the more waxes there are to protect dehydration. Um, and so waxes can be used for energy storage. They can be used to protect from dehydration and in some cases used to protect from water, uh, allowing microorganisms to get in and, and do their business. So let's look at a, an important example of fats acting as an energy storage compound in in bacteria. So many bacteria, when food is abundant, whether the food comes in the form of sugars or some other uh, some other macromolecule, will actually rearrange those molecules into a long lipid called polyhydroxybutyrate. And these polymers of PHB, sometimes referred to as PHA, which is a more generic term, polyhydroxyalkanoate, but these, these polymers of PHB are essentially oil droplets, which is what a fat is. A fat is fats and oils are very similar molecules, and these PHB is really in many ways a form of an oil. Um, and you get these large oil deposits, if you will, on the inside of microorganisms as a way to store the excess carbon and energy. Lots and lots of carbon is needed to build new cells during binary fission, and lots is needed to break apart to get ATP to carry out life functions. And so this is essentially a food storage, just like you and I, if we eat too much, are going to store a lot of excess in the form of lipids. Okay, quick lesson summary on the lipids and where they fit into the world of microbes. Lipids are all the hydrophobic molecules in the cell. No real clear rhyme or reason uh, except the fact that they repel water. So no monomers, no true polymers associated with them. They don't appear to be uh, as clearly linked to one another as, say, all the amino acids and the proteins are, or the nucleic acids and their nucleotides, or the carbohydrates, uh, the polysaccharides and the sugars. The main groups of lipids are going to be fats, phospholipids, steroids, and waxes. The phospholipids are undoubtedly the most important, and in many cases, uh, microbes will also deposit fats just like other organisms will. And then PHB is a very important and common uh, lipid storage compound. It's not exactly a fat. I'm using that term a little bit loosely, but it's a lipid storage compound in bacteria because, as I said earlier, it turns out that um, that lipids, that these hydrocarbons, are a much more efficient way to store high-energy electrons than in the form of, uh, of sugars. So work your way back through this again as we build our, our story, looking at uh, a review of chemistry, looking at uh, the types of bonds and chemical reactions and macromolecules and their monomers that allow microorganisms to exist.